kind of initially the, the programs that I looked at um, to develop our program around was Boise State and UC Irvine. So UC Irvine is, um, uh, esports is really popular, uh, especially on the West Coast. So I know that uh, UC Irvine was one of the first schools to really start to take esports seriously and, and kind of push it towards students and provide programming and provide opportunities for students to compete at a high level. And they didn't really even know what that looked like four or five years ago. But um, Boise State, at the uh, lead of Dr. Haskell, who is the head of the esports at Boise State, um, those two programs have provided this type of infrastructure where you can kind of seamlessly, okay, what have they done? What type of production value do they have when it comes to producing and uh, having students on stream and talking about different games and having students cast and having students develop um, graphic design opportunities for students to put things on stream and things like that. And so I've looked at those two programs as kind of the uh, pro kind of the programs in which we have, you know, really developed our program around. So if you, if you look at those programs and the way their website was built and their student agreements and how they carry themselves, there's going to be a lot of strong similarities when it comes to Boise State, UC Irvine, and honestly what we're trying to get to. So initially in the status quo, we have students who are playing in, in test bus tournaments. So Steven is on the Rocket League team and he has the opportunity to actually win scholarship money if they are um, able to win the uh, Collegiate Rocket League tournament um, provided by TESPA. And so Overwatch, our Overwatch guys have the same opportunity to win scholarship funds that goes, to, you know, goes towards paying off school and classes and things like that. So uh, we are currently in the development of establishing scholarships for esports specific players, uh, especially at the varsity level. So those opportunities are coming down the pipeline, but what I think is really important to understand is that just by simply competing and playing at the varsity level, you have the opportunity to win scholarship money. Um, but no, those things are currently in development as well. So TESPA is pretty much like a, uh, any other tournament. Um, it has a certain, like, you have to make an account with them and verify as your student, a uh, full-time student, which full -time is student. 12 hours. Um, and once you verify that, then you can just join the roster, and then uh, you verify, like, your account, like, uh, your, where, that you're playing on, and then you just jump into a, games, and there's, there's a schedule with uh, different pools and stuff. So we actually are partners with NACE, which is the National Association of Collegiate Esports. So whenever someone like Steven or someone, uh, some of my Overwatch guys compete, we submitted ourselves to this governing body, which also works hand in hand with TESPA. And what TESPA does is they're essentially a tournament organizing branch that organizes large scale um, esports tournaments on behalf of colleges, which is really interesting because there's such a need and want to compete at a high level. So TESPA has kind of come in and fill that need for, uh, for colleges to have an organized structure in which they can come in and compete for guys like Steven, for guys uh, that are on my Overwatch team. And so that's really awesome that they're doing things like that. But there's also other avenues. Let's say you're a part of the club and you don't make it on to the varsity roster. There are other ways in which you can compete at a high level uh, that isn't necessarily through TESPA or NACE or things like that. So you have other avenues in which you can compete, um, like Collegiate Star League and AVGL and other leagues, along, and uh, College Carball is another league that we're a part of. So uh, not only will, these, um, will our teams be participating in TESPA and, and, and NACE tournaments, but they'll also be participating in these other leagues. And you start to see actually other leagues sprout up um, honestly weekly in response to interest and in maybe even in a specific area. So there's going to be opportunities for students to go compete at LAN um, at other schools along with uh, students to compete remotely and in this space. So I'm excited for Steven to get playing with the Rocket League roster and I'm excited uh, with what we're already doing with the Overwatch roster. So my experience with um, all of these titles, I guess we can start with Overwatch. And uh, the Overwatch roster, you have to compete at a very high level. So we play against teams that, are, that have team averages that can range from 3K to honestly over 4.2K, which is really high, especially for Overwatch. And then as we move into Rocket League, we have players on our team that are um, pushing towards Grand Champ and Champ 1 and Champ 2 and things like that. And so Steven has been working every single day to make sure that he gets himself to that level along with the rest of our roster, which is really exciting to see. And we. Um, haven't pushed into other titles just yet because you know this is our first semester, but when it comes to looking at esports as a whole, you have to move into something like League of Legends. It's just such a big game. It's yeah. it's the backbone of the esports industry. So League of Legends is actually one of the games that kind of started the whole esports scene with like yeah. tournaments and stuff. True. Like that and StarCraft too, I think are like pretty much the founding fathers of esports in general. Definitely. And I think what's exciting too is we talked about a little earlier about the development of the collegiate esports scene. And for me as a director, um, I need to ex look at the landscape of collegiate esports and honestly really see where that structure is being pushed. So we have people who apply daily that I see for Fortnite, for uh, PUBG, for Counter-Strike, 
even StarCraft, for example, that um, we are essentially examining the landscape that what currently exists in the status quo for students to compete and what makes sense for us to push resources and time into so that these students can compete. And honestly, for example, console gaming is really starting to pop off as well. Yeah. For example, Call of Duty, there's actually the creation of the Call of Duty Collegiate League, which happened maybe this semester. So I mean, the, even those console games are being pushed and played at a very high level. So there's interest from students and high schoolers that apply daily, that play every single gaming title that you can think of. And it's up to, honestly, it's up to us to really look at what, um, what currently exists in the collegiate scene and what honestly makes the most sense moving forward and pushing into in response to student interest, applicants, and honestly, the infrastructure of that game. So The, uh, the collegiate Rocket League scene is actually uh, getting like more traction than every year. Um, with, with new seasons coming out and new, uh, new maps and stuff, they just keep adding stuff to the game and to the Rocket League scene where it's more interesting and more appealing to college students and high school students and everybody. I mean, it's uh, compared to their like actual RLCS, um, it's not near as big, but I mean, it's, it's definitely getting like to that level. So I think what the most exciting thing for uh, high school students and incoming students is that there's an opportunity to play every game that you can think of. So you can take something as simple as Fortnite to something as complicated as Counter-Strike. Fortnite Mobile is a yeah. big game that um, you're starting to actually see more and more clips uh, posted by on the Fortnite account that feature mobile Fortnite gameplays, yeah. which honestly is, is, is really, really interesting because as you examine kind of the landscape of eSports and, and where technology is moving, um, everybody has access to a phone. Not everybody has access to a PC, not everybody has access to a console, but for the most part, um, everybody has an iPhone or everybody has some sort of cellular device that connects to the internet. So um, you're seeing a lot of game developers and a lot of gaming, different gaming titles start to push into that industry because once again, it all comes down to access. And if you can access that game and play that game, I mean, it, 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 it leads to a lot of exposure for your brand, at least a, a lot of exposure in a, to your game. So, I mean, it's really interesting to see other industries start to push into mobile gaming when it might not necessarily be uh, one of the most popular, uh, understood gaming entities in the status quo. It's really interesting. So for Twitch, uh, I think the most important thing is that you understand that it's a free streaming platform online in which anybody can access and, and watch personalities or, or, or leagues or players play for free. And I think that's one of the most important things that you're going to see, especially in the esports industry, is that there seems to be this push towards this model of free and, and access. And that's really one of the most important things that Twitch offers is access. It's unmitigated access to players performing at a very, very high level. And it also contributes to the entertainment aspect, which is very important. Just like traditional sports, you log on to Twitch because you're interested one in video games and you're interested in what's happening in the esports scene. And you can pick and choose whatever gaming title that you're interested in. And you can get onto Twitch and see people per performing at a very high level. So you're watching people do things that you wish you could do. And so I think for me, um, I view Twitch as an opportunity for exposure for our students to one if they ever wanted to push into the semi-professional or professional scene, it's an opportunity for them to honestly gain some sort of exposure for other schools, for other uh, esports organizations to see how talented uh, these students really are. So Twitch has played a huge role in the development of, of esports, especially within uh, collegiate esports. Um, so, like of course there's the, uh, on Twitch, there's the live streams of the actual tournaments and, and the different matches that the players play. But uh, the thing that got me into it is that you can actually see like both them like in the um, like tournament games. You can also watch them like just playing casual games or just playing like as they're grinding their ranks up. Um, it's fun to like be able to actually interact with those pro players, and you can see that they're like just True. players just like Definitely. us. Definitely, yeah. It, it kind of makes it almost seem achievable that like you know this guy started playing two years ago. Maybe, maybe in two years I can play and be in that position. As a high school esports person who may not necessarily have the amount of access that they would like, um, I think the first thing that you need to do is see what, what is offered at the high school level. So does your school offer any sort of esports curriculum or do they have any computers on campus in which you could possibly play on those, on those computers? They might not be optimal, they might not be the best computers, but if there's something that you as a student are that interested in, you could possibly even work with administration, especially at the high school level, and pursue um, 
the esports industry because I think it's important and you'll see um, you're seeing high schools honestly all around Wichita State start to respond once again just like we did at the collegiate level to high schoolers because it's becoming so so popular amongst the students so I would say for me for example I didn't necessarily have a PC growing up but I did have access to a console be that uh, a GameCube a PS2 an Xbox Xbox 360 Xbox One S if there's any way that you can somehow get your hands on um, even mobile gaming for example we've touched on that as well it's if you can somehow gain access to some piece of the industry it can really kind of start to push you towards that uh, that that high level of interest I think for me and I, and I see that as, as an opportunity for students to, to do something like that so I don't necessarily it's a, it, those are tough waters to navigate because once again it, it, if you don't have access to a, a console or a PC it might be difficult yeah. but okay maybe if you if you can't necessarily play on something like that then you can watch which is where Twitch comes into, into play. And you don't have to pay for anything. You can just get onto Twitch and, and watch people play at a high level. So yeah. I don't know for you though. Yeah, one of the main things that I touched on is uh, playing games with friends. Yeah. Um, like, I'm pretty sure you can ask anybody in your, in your class or something that, hey, do you have an Xbox? And then True. you go over to his house and you can play. I yeah. mean, there's, there's plenty of ways that you can get access to these games and these titles. And I mean, it's, it's about playing with other people and competing. And so, um, so how I got started in gaming was, of course, my brother playing console games, but uh, my brother handed me down an old MacBook Pro, and that's, that's what started with, I started playing League of Legends and different games like that, and once I got that MacBook Pro, I'm like, well, this isn't working anymore, so I immediately went and started looking into PC building and, and different parts and different things that I need for my PC. And then uh, I got to build my first PC with a budget of like five hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. And then good luck. I built I built that PC and got it running. Started playing more games and more games came out. And then so after I got my PC, uh, I I immediately got a laptop when I got into college. That was uh, a pretty good. I got an MSI laptop, and uh, that's probably been my staple like machine that I've been playing on lately. Yeah, so I think the most important thing, honestly, for high school, high school students to understand is that you, you need to get accepted to whatever university you're interested in, in playing at. So the first, first step is to connect with admissions, connect with that university, and figure out, okay, what are the requirements to get accepted to said university? And then the next step is to see, okay, go through the website, go through Wichita State's website, or whatever, whatever website that you choose, or uh, whatever school that you choose to be a part of, and see what currently exists on campus. Does my school have a club? Does my school have a varsity team? Do they have both? Yeah. And then after that, you find the contact information for who, who is ever in charge of whichever organization, and then you, uh, you go through the, the typical process in which you would to, to join a club as a student. And then if there's an option to play at the varsity level, there, there tends to be a process for that as well. So I, what I can say for us here at Wichita State is it, um, we have students who apply daily, and we have a data bank, and we keep track of all those students that apply. And so, um, moving forward, there will be tryouts, for example, for new game titles that we introduce. But once again, those tryouts will probably be capped at a certain SR, and we're going to require you to, um, if you don't meet that certain skill requirement, then you know that's one. It's already kind of a vetting process that we have, especially for the varsity. But if you're just looking to play and play at a high level, and maybe you don't meet that skill requirement initially, then there's always the club, mm. and there's opportunities for you to play and honestly rise through the ranks in the club. Just like you would do in a traditional sport for basketball, maybe you're not on the starting roster your first two years of high school. Okay, well you get better and you're, you work your way up to a starting spot on the varsity roster. So if I'm a high school student, I'm looking to play esports at Wichita State, the first thing that I need to do, one, is get admitted, and then two, is to honestly access through the website and see what's out there. When I was, I was online looking uh, for different clubs, and then, because uh, I, I was looking for something to do on campus, and I saw that there was an esports club and so uh, I clicked on that and there was an application, I filled out my name and then uh, I, I submitted that application and then I got a message saying come on in and then talked with Tyler and kind of got thrown into the fire I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely, it was kind of crazy especially for Rocket League this semester because you know we've had to shift some, shift some things around for sure uh, with the Rocket League roster but uh, I think the exciting thing though is that, you know, for Steven, I, I saw his application and I saw that he not only played Rocket League, but he also played other games, so I knew that those core mechanics would, would definitely be there, and he also competed at a high enough level of Rocket League that I was just thinking to myself, okay, especially for this semester, you know, Steven can come in and, and you know, we can kind of throw him to the fire a little bit, but I also know that he's going to work hard, that he's interested in esports and he's interested in, in putting in the work and time to get to the level of a lot of our other players, so um, it was a pretty seamless transition. 
but um, there is a process. And Steven went through the process and, you know, it just, you know, he happened to be the guy. So you're on campus and you're expected to come in and, you know, you have to be a college student, which, which means there's a lot of, uh, of, of expectation put on you when you have to perform at a high level in the classroom. So I think just like traditional athletes, this is a great way for students to come in and compete at a high level. And honestly, whatever game that we decide to introduce at a varsity level and whatever games they have at the club level, because they have a variety of games um, in the club, I mean, soccer, gaming, but we also have a couple of titles for uh, at the varsity level. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and click on the link below.